is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Tuesday. Tuesday, the what is this, 14th of September. We're looking at the Dow down 85 points at 34,784. The pattern that we've been discussing, let me show you right here, the dreaded H pattern. We haven't yet taken out on a second uh, time basis the 34,599 uh, level that was made on three days ago. And 34,690 was the low around about the August 19th. Then there was this huge pop to the 35,510 level. And all of a sudden, it turned around at a peak B, became a peak B minus because it failed. And this is the pattern that we look at in the dreaded H. We haven't yet um, confirmed. So this is, let me just explain. Uh, the left side low, when you come down straight line, like here it is, uh, at 34,690, when you arch over, if you take out that left side low, you have two bars in which to close above. Well, this is the second day. And we are we closed above yesterday. We're going to be watching this level very closely. It's the level on the left, 34,690. We're at 34,790. We're 100 points above that. If we take out this one level here, that says, whoops, you're now very vulnerable to taking out the 34,598. That's why we call it the dreaded H, because once you start that cycle of arching over, you can keep going down, and that's going to be what, what we're watching in terms of the Dow itself. But all the, look at this. All the indices are a different pattern. Look, you've got an arch formation here. You've got the S&P, which had a choice of breaking out above the Chapman falling axe formation. Oh, let me explain that, uh, which implies that you, you make a high, and then you start to come down. You're making lower highs and much lower lows. Then all of a sudden, the pattern says, up, oh, finding a base. If it takes out that trend line, that upper trend line, you can go one-to-one -to, -one to the upside and even retest and break the left side high. So the falling X looks like an X because there's the, uh, there's the um, so the, the, you've got your strong handle. You've got the lower high. And then you've got a much lower low. That's the expanding wedge formation. So when you take that out, it's really important. Well, there's also a technique that I call called the inside track, where just below that, I'll have a little mini channel, and that becomes the repellent zone. We got there a few times in the S&P and then broke down. And now we're testing the lower trend line. In fact, we've broken it a couple of times. And now we've got it at a lower point, and that makes the uh, 44, 45.70 low really important. And we're at 44.62 right now. So those of you who are thinking that, oh, this is just another little one of those buy the dip moments, I believe the tide has turned, at least in the short term, all the daily charts, not the weekly. We have to wait until Friday before we can talk about the weekly charts. But the daily tide has said, we are now going towards a low tide, not a high tide. That's my impression. Could be completely wrong. Certainly a break into the 4510s would be really good action. I just don't see what's going to do that right now. So the S&P is down 5 at 4463, the QQQ. And I mentioned uh, a question came up. Um, how on earth? What techniques would you use to short the best index of all? Well, I'm using the Chapman Wave methodology in, the, in this particular technique. We're always looking for the fourth highest peak to start to consider uh, whether or not there's going to be a failure because the technicals are failing. Well, it was really just the Chapman Wave notation and the little doji candle at night on the 7th of September at 382.78 that suggested quite strongly that in the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest low and then count each successively higher peak, alphabetizing them all the way from A to B to C to D, E, F, and G. But it's at that fourth highest peak labeled peak D that other things can happen. We've seen that happen. We saw that, um, that February peak D back last year in the Dow that just was it created tumult in the market. So here we are, peak D in the uh, QQQs. And as I say, we, we shorted uh, quite a few days ago last week. 
and um, it's at 376.44. It's up 10 cents today, starting to act poorly, but it's the MACD that's weak, the stochastic that's weak, the on balance that's weak. The relative strength is okay in the daily chart, but until we get a crossover, a negative crossover, the nine period moving average going below the 14 period moving average, any sell mode that we have, which is it's in right now, is ephemeral because um, we've got to wait quite a bit. It would take a 372 level to really see that green cross under the 14 period moving average. So that's going to be very important. So yes, we short the Dow, yes, we short the, uh, the Qs. Uh, but what's really important is that if you're looking at the sectors that, are, that have been important and the patterns, the pattern that I talk about, the lowercase h that can go to a lowercase m and stay in a rectangle formation in the IWM, the Russell 2000, that's continuing. It is no, there's no change. We went to the upper band. Now we're pulling back. Peak C1, C2 in the monthly chart. Question came in about um, the SMHs. Well, the SMHs, we haven't done anything yet with the SMHs. I'm real close. The high on today's... Tuesday, Friday, the high on Friday was 276.04, a bit of a dip on Monday. Today, a rally and then a pullback. We're down 53 cents in the 273.83. What was the high today? 276.05. We got that missing peak D. Remember what we said in the Chapman methodology? You want to go from a buy signal to a buy mode. The implication is that you should go to at least a D. Well, we've just got that D by one penny. Now you've got all the indices at a very important level. I'm not saying it's such an important level that it's the end of the world. I'm saying it's an important level because I've been waiting for the S for the SMHs to give some kind of a signal in the Chapman wave, not necessarily in the technicals, but in the in the in the in the way we uh, assess the. Here we are, Chapman Wave methodology. And yeah, we've got our leg D, the missing leg D uh, from the 249.35 low of around about the 19th of August. And here it is today on the 14th of September, less than a month later. And we've got that. And you've got an extension in leg. I am going to keep calling this a leg F in the weekly chart. I could give it an alternate count, but I don't see any reason why it's the daily that's important. So in the semiconductors, which have been what they've said before, and they've said over and over and over again, there's a chip shortage. We've seen that how it's impacted um, the uh, order order companies, although GM is up today, up 10 cents. But that was a tremendous fall from 64 down to the 47 level. And now we're looking at uh, um, some kind of a counter trend bounce. But I don't know whether they're faking us out or whatever it is. But certainly so many companies that are involved in chips. Let's look at Tesla. Tesla is... Uh, make some peak D the other day. It's having a rally today of nine points. All I can say is I, it must have been very selective. And all that I can think of is when Dave, I heard Dave White mention that the order company is always too cheap to buy the chips and they're paying the penalty for it. So maybe it's very selective. But as far as I'm concerned, if the semiconductor index trading at 273.50, now down 82 cents, starts to go in the next week and a half below 267. We have a problem here. Dow's down 111, SP's down 9. I'll be right back. I get the conditions out. Another Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so we're back. Basil Trap and Dow's down 104, SP's down 8. And uh, in the E-mini futures, we saw this big spike. Uh, what was, what was some deflationary news? I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, at 8.30, whoosh, we go from the 4461 area in the E-mini S&P futures. Uh, I'm talking about the, I don't, I don't change my contract until I'm, I'm, uh, some big reminder comes up. But I go right, I cut to the edge. Well, maybe I'll do that earlier this week. We'll see. Um, so a big spike up into the 4480s, and that's a peak F, and then it goes sideways. Remember, rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience, and then it starts to trade between 4486 and 4480. Does that for a long time, it goes to peak A, peak B, peak C. What do we do? We get a peak D right there. So the second top, which is a little bit lower than the high that was made at 4489.50, that is at 44. I remember this very well. 4486.75, and it starts to come down real sharply. goes all the way down to 4, 4, <laughs> amazing, 5, 5.50. And now we've gone sideways again in the rectangle formation, but this time from a low. So we're going to have to see if there's a close at any one-minute bar uh, above 4,460, I'm going to have to say 67.50. And they can hold all the way through for three bars, in other words, three minutes, and then create 4461 as a support. Actually, I don't even want to see the 4462. And then have a pop into the 4470 to the 4473 level, the 200 period moving average. Any time today, I'm giving it the whole day to do that. I would have to say that that is good counter trend support, and that can hold the market up uh, a lot better. But if, in fact, for whatever reason, there's a sudden slide, and we close on a 10-minute uh, um, basis under 44.53 today, um, that's going to be a problem. Right now, I think that we, we absolutely will see some kind of buy. You know how it is here. Can't come down a little too long, and then itch your fingers on the upside. So that's, the, that's what I'm looking at right here. So it starts, uh, this is peak A again, peak A, leg A, peak A. Okay, so it, start, it starts a leg, a new leg, about 44, 64.75 in the very short term. But I'm going to draw this in to say, remember, 
a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. We'll be looking at that over a period of many minutes. Let's go back to our story here. So what we're looking at is within the SMHs, you've got that leg D uh, is now back up uh, to up plus 38 cents. We're going to be watching this because any move into the two uh, 276. 278.90 or higher area this week would be really impressive for the SMHs and say, nope, there's still internal strength. We might be looking at the tide of the overbought sectors. This isn't in that category just yet. Now let's continue and we want to look at the, um, let me just do this. I can't remember if I did. I did it during the update. This is gold. Gold is up six now at 1800. Uh, just called it 1801. Uh, really important, even though I've got an S showing here for the nine period moving average crossing negative. This is a chap wave upside down, stalk leg formation. Uh, we're going to be watching this because if there's a move in the next few days and with the, the talk of this inflation, um, I, I, I'm going to be watching it because if, crude, if gold is able to get to the 1810 area, that's just 10, 11 points from here, then that 200 period moving average magnet kicks in again at 1814 and we can chop around there. And as I said, gold is in play for narrow short term intraday trades. I just don't see it having, I must do this SI quickly, silver is. Um, down four cents at 23.74. That's telling us that Chapway falling axe upside down pattern. Uh, it's really struggling. It has to get to 24.10 to break above. And if it slides under 23.35, that's a problem. What I was going to say is that Bitcoin, Bitcoin is trading up 15.75 at 46,390. Well, it made a peak D. Uh, technically, I should do that. I'm going to wait for the rest of the day. I should have it down. I'm going to put it in now because I've met all the criteria, even if it rallies. Uh, the criteria says the daddy is in a sell mode. There could be bounces. But I think just for the moment, I, I, I think Bitcoin has had that fantastic play going from under 30,000. Remember, 28,000 was my 28,800 was the, the level I was looking at as support, which it came to. We are still long a small bit. Um, and it went all the way to 53,125. Now it's consolidating at 4629. I think this is more in play than gold at this particular point uh, as a trading. I'm only talking about trading. And we're looking at, uh, I have to go to the dollar after that. The dollar is trading down uh, 14 ticks at 92.49. It's just within this pattern, making it red at H. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. It has already in the weekly chart done a whole, everything we were looking at, had a good rally leg, then the body, then the neck, then the beak. And now we're going to see what happens if the beak continues lower by going under 92. That's going to be a big problem. It's at 92.49 right now. But if it's able to get to 92.80, uh, no, 92.93. Um, that's going to be a big positive. That'll, that'll make legs C quite strong in the day. So we're watching that closely. Uh, TLT, here we go. TLT, <clears throat> very strong move. And that suggests to me, because it's made a new recovery high, I can now call this leg C in the day. The stochastic is lagging badly. The MACD has just turned positive. So this is still in the early stages of a breakout above the Chapman falling axe resistance area. It's in the rectangle formation that I drew uh, with an arch saying that if the arch is successful, which so far it looks like it is because it's broken above the left side high, um, that says you can now make a cup formation. Let me just draw that in. We're all about patterns here. Cups and arches. Here we go. Cup and arch. There we are. So that's important because the market generally will be weak. I, this is the way the tradition has worked for decades that when uh, money flows from the insecurity of stocks because they're becoming volatile in, in the parlance of Wall Street. Volatile means going down. Um, uh, money flows back into the safety of bonds. That's all. Make it as simple as possible. So here we are. We're in, in, in a sell mode in all the indices, in the daily charts. Look at the IYT. I was asked about, would I look at that? Yeah, dreaded H pattern in the weekly. That nine period, look at this, how just one moving average can keep you in a trade. We haven't been in this trade, but in a trade forever. Look, since the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund, God, what a title, broke down. Uh, the week of June the 18th, below the nine period moving av after average after making that uh, a month earlier in May at 287.40. Uh, I should put that in. 
287.40, all time, uh, yeah, all time high. Look what's happened, peak B in the monthly, but peak E in the weekly, look what's happened. It's come down, it's been repelled every single week. Even when it's touched it week after week, the nine, the black 14 period moving average and the nine crossed negative under the 14 and went pink, it went from green to pink and it's down again today, down 238. Wow, I have to tell you, this is a divergence. I will, I, I don't, I'm not a Dow theorist, theorist, although for 40 or more years, I've been talking about it. I, I'm not a theorist, but I always talk about it saying, I like to see the transportation index confirming Dow highs because that's just, it's a good sign. I don't treat it as an indicator or anything like that, but really, uh, this is a huge divergence and it's one that's telling it as we go to the break, Jets, which is the uh, US Global Jets ETF, down again, down 26 cents and get a second M-shaped uh, pattern, H is the M, lowercase M, fading again. I'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. A bunch of questions came in. I'll get to them in a moment. Let me just show you here the rectangle formation that I discussed before with the low that was made around about the 4455 five area. We dipped one more time in the arch formation. And we're stuck in the rectangle. This is from 10 o'clock till 10.30 right now. 30 bars, and you still haven't broken out above 4.465. You haven't really broken down below, sharply below 4.445. 4, 
4455. We've had just a brief moment. And look at this. So isn't that interesting? When you can identify patterns, it makes a big difference. So um, I didn't finish. So could you finish that? Could you finish your thought on the cues? Uh, why you went short? Oh, <laughs> did I? I thought I did. QQQ. Uh, wait, before I do that, I've got the chart up of Apple. Apple made 157.26 high on the 7th of uh, September, showing it at 149. Not a big deal. What is it? 148 points. Uh, it's what? 6% or so. It's not a big deal. So what we are looking at, though, is hey, what is it? In two hours time or something? At what? At uh, noonish or so? They make an, uh, some kind of announcement. I don't follow. I don't have any Apple products. My wife does. I don't. Um, so whatever it is. We'll see what happens. But it is a peak F in the uh, daily. It is going to be a peak F if there's no new recovery high above 150, all-time high above 157.26 in the daily. Um, and the monthly chart, I at this particular point, I could call it F slash B. I just don't see any reason. I've got it as an F, but we don't have to be thinking about it just yet. And this, in fact, I want to be as strict as possible in the Chadway methodology. Yes, this could become a question came up and I forgot to answer it yesterday. This could become a Chadway instant restart of peak D. And now the price has to tell you exactly what's happened. Why? Because if there's a close on a weekly basis below 151.68, the low of the week of the 20th of August, that negates that particular pattern. That's all. Keep it as simple as possible. But the weekly chart, flat 87% stochastic. On balance volume has pulled back a little bit after being overbought. MACD is still positive. Nine is way above the 14. I'm telling you now, <clears throat> the weekly charts in most of, most instances and the oh i did this yesterday i better do it again today let me just do this here um i'll get to the question the cues in a moment look amazon this is the, this is the uh, fang stocks amazon stores at 3470 right now <clears throat> up 12 after pulling back after the peak b at 3547 all-time high on the 13th of july 3773.08 just missed a round number. And then it did that pattern. We spoke about it live on air. It did the dreaded H pattern and then gapped down huge. And I said, it could be a one to if this fails, Amazon fails. I thought there was a short term top in place. Uh, and that if Amazon failed, there could be a one to one to the downside. Bam, it goes to 3506 <clears throat> uh, back in July. Tries to rally, makes a second arch formation, plummets under the 200 period moving average. And then makes a low, a doji candle low at 3175.76. 3175.76. And that was around about the 17th or so of August. And now it's had a fabulous run. And now it's stalling again. So yeah, I went through each one of these Apple, we did Amazon, Netflix, uh, PE. Doji candle top at 600. Why not type? Oh, I did, and then I lost the information. But now I'm saving every single thing. Click every second, I'm saving. So makes a high of 600 and, 600 and show up. 615.60. Oh, you remember, I thought it was a round number, but there was a 60. 614.60. And it's trading now at 583, 5% 5 decline, peak E probably in the weekly chart, leg D, that's right, yesterday we spoke about the leg D in the monthly chart, and what am I missing, Facebook. So I wanted to discuss <clears throat> character, I wanted to discuss thinking, and I wanted to discuss the masses, what the masses want. There's always this talk about what the gen what the population wants. I say, boo. You cannot do that. The population gets things wrong at the last because the media pumps and pumps and pumps something. It can't happen two, three times. It has to be said over and over and over um, until it's so ingrained in. I always think that some some phrase has to be perpetuated. So that it is out in the boondocks, out in the, the in in the where where humanity is sparse. When those people start to repeat ad nauseum 
what's been said months or years ago, then you say, oh my God, that's that's a, that's a top for that particular index. So um, <clears throat> I want you to talk about it in terms, I don't want to do that today, but I'll talk about it at some point if I find the time to talk about Im the, your impressions and why technical analysis, for, as far as I'm concerned, is so important. Look, I don't happen to like uh, Facebook guy, what was his name? Uh, of course, I, I must have intentionally blocked it out psychologically. Um, I, I, I can see his picture right now. Anyway, I don't like him. I, 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 but I gave him praise in the very first earnings report on Facebook uh, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. I always need help. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> because he turned the company around. He was just this Harvard graduate. He comes up with a good idea. I don't know if he stole it or not, but he came up with this idea of monetizing something. And he did it wrong. And then he did it. Apps. Once he started to figure out when, when, he, when the complaints came in, the business side complaints came in, he rectified it. And he's turned that into an incredible company. I remember subscribers saying in the 18s, wow, this is probably the buy of a lifetime. Well, <clears throat> probably it was a buy of a lifetime. But that's so, it's completely separate to the business side of it. Look at Facebook, almost at an all-time high. So you've got to separate. And that's what I say to subscribers when occasionally, SWBI, I can't remember if it's still uh, there. SWBI, yeah, Smith & Weston. <clears throat> When I get a buy signal on Smith & Weston, I say, hey, it's up to you. You can take that money that you make if you if you make money uh, in this. This is firearms at, at L. You can take that money and, and put it to, to anti-gun anti whatever legislature, whatever you want. You've got to try to separate the, these things because if you want to be moral, you've got to be moral about everything. And that's kind of tough to do in the stock market. I'm not saying to buy it. I'm just saying morality is something that's really, it's a tough, tough nut to crack. Therefore, technical analysis is really what we want to be looking at. And if you do a technical analysis, the QQQ was at a point where, at least on the short term, based certainly on the Chapman Wave methodology, there was signs to say at least near term, you've got a chance of pulling back to consolidate that weekly chart is still spectacular. The monthly chart is more than spectacular. But you go one thing at a time. And that one thing at a time is just suggesting that the cues, because the leadership, once again, I'm not getting to the morality of it because Google is everywhere. Those of you who know that you suddenly get advertising <clears throat> where you've just been thinking about some particular product, um, you know there's something out there, two separate things. QQQs are pulling back, but if they break 373, 372 support, that's serious. I think that's the chance. Back at the moment, for, for, for the cap wave uh, analysis of cap stocks like Bible to be done. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. New bumper music. So, folks, we're looking at uh, gold up 13. Gold and bonds are moving in the same direction. That's that's uh, hasn't quite worked that way for a little while, and we're going to be watching this very closely because remember, I circled this in the gold contract. I said, if we break down, it means one thing. If we turn around, you've got your U-shaped pattern. I'm going to draw that in as an alternate right there, and that's going to suggest that the 200 period moving average of 1814 will become uh, a target. And if at 1807, if we can get to 1809.60, then all of a sudden that 1840 level becomes a real strong magnet. Uh, a couple of questions came in. Oh, uh, before we go to our, our caller, we're going to go to just, I wanted to show you FXI, same thing, pulling back at a peak D. Uh, watch this closely. It's down 87 cents. This is China the, the um, uh, big cap China fund. Let's go to uh, Sharky in Boston. Hi, Sharky. How are you? Hi, Basil. How are you? Good to uh, good to talk to you again. Good to talk to you. Yes. You'd like to look so, at? Yeah, at the VIX, I was, you know, I was kind of looking at the, um, you know, a weekly, a one year, and then I was looking at the 120 minute. And, you know, in the whole scheme of things with, um, you know, what's, the tide changing in the markets and stuff, and and uh, you know I'm kind of looking at it um, this way that the the sharks are kind of underneath you know 20 or so feet circling underneath, and they haven't quite breached the surface yet and and, and made the made the real turn here and, and stuff. And I'm just kind of wondering where, what what does the VIX have to do here? It looks to me like you know in a in one year weekly that the VIX is kind of going sideways, and I guess you could draw a rectangle pattern there. And then I looked at it on 120 minute. And you can see that too. But I'm I'm interesting, you know, where the VIX has to go to to, to kind of seal this thing and and, and uh, you know kind of it be be a, and I don't want to say a feeding frenzy on the downside, but <laughs> but that's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, I think you're you're in the water a little too much there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Especially when the water's absolutely. cold at this time of the year. So okay, let's just do this in a, in a very uh, a methodical way. The uh, VIX index ran up to a peak E on the 120-minute chart on the 8th E, and then it pulls back. And then it had a spectacular move, uh, uh, partly yesterday and then partly again early today. Uh, this is what I'm going to tell you. Make it as simple as possible. The numbers I look at have changed. They've been forced to change because of COVID. We've had a higher level of uncertainty which means that all that stuff we saw in the nines and the tens and the volatility index, I just haven't seen that uh, much. Maybe you'll see one little slide uh, into the 11, 12 area. But basically, we've been hugging the 16 to 18, 19 area. More important is the fact that within the context of the volatility index, I'm going to show the daily chart. And I mentioned on Friday, 
oh, was it Friday? Yes, it was a weekly chart on Friday. That if we close strongly in the volatility index, and this is one of the, uh, the other aspects where I was thinking of um, where I was thinking of the short short positions that we got for subscribers to my opening call, um, yep. is that if it closed high, it would be the first time in weeks, and actually a couple of months, in a month and a half, the, the last time it did that was back on the 18th, week of the 18th of June, when it hit 21.04 and then closed at 20.70 uh, that week. However, it it's really the fact that on a on a closing basis, we're talking about uh, closing basis. We're talking about way back in March, the week of the fifth of March, when it hit 31.90. That was the last time that it actually uh, closed uh, confidently above 20. It might have been just above 20, but it was a red candle. So I'm just going to say to you to make it as simple as possible. The VIX in the volatility index needs to hold in the 19 to 20 plus area. In other words, anything above 19 on a closing basis on Friday, this coming Friday, will suggest to me <clears throat> that there's a certain uh, consistency in the selling pressure. That's number one. Number two, mm -hmm. it says that the volatility index is in play. And I just wanted to see here, someone sent a uh, foot buying. What was it? The Dow Transports historically. Okay, let me just see. This is a good, good. This is part of what we're talking about. The Dow Transport historically leads when big moves, with big moves first. It is one of the best signals out there. Something, um, something that does remain the same. Yeah, you know, I, I, I have to kind of agree with that, uh, Paul. I, I don't, I don't disagree at all. Um, but it's a divergence. It's one of those things with timing that because the transportation index has just been going down, 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 we've seen the markets generally going up to new highs. Um, so that doesn't tell you anything about timing. It just it's like when you look at 1929, you look and you say, oh, my God, the uh, advanced decline line was going down. Yeah, it was going down for 18 months. So which day would you go to short? You know, you, if you do the Chapman wave analysis, at some point I'll bring it back again. I haven't discussed it for ages. We got our peaks uh, even there. Uh, going back historically, we got the peaks that gave you uh, tops. But that's completely separate. So I'm going to make it simple. Volatility index at 19.60 right now is only up 23 cents. Not a big deal. If yeah. you start to see a consistent level of the 19s as support, or I'd even say 18.50 as support, but every other day or every two days, you start to see a bounce into the 2021 20, area. That's a sign to say the, the the big guns are really out there and they are taking this very seriously and they're getting protection for their portfolios. That's number one. Now, I've already done number one. This is number two. Number three is that you want to see if you are short, you want to see confirmation with the, volat with the volatility index closing near the highs of the day with a nice green candle, with the Dow triple digit down sharply, and the S&P double digit down. And you want to see that as a consistent theme so that the future is not like today. This is a, this is a fake out by some serious players where they're allowing yeah. the market to pop to the upside. And this is the third day we've seen uh, if you, if out, out of six days, maybe we could even call this the third or fourth day where we've seen the sessions pull back from the highs. And that to me says we were looking at a chance of distribution in many of the stocks, especially the FANG stocks, F-A-A-N-G. And we're starting to see them start, start to weaken. That was leadership. Yesterday, we saw the semiconductors move higher, not hold again, but move higher. And even today, they're holding near, near the highs. So there are clues to say this is what we want to look at as leftover strength. So I'm going to make it clear as the VIX index either moves into the 20s and starts to hold. And for the next at least week, you want to see many days where you see triple digits down moves in the Dow, 
and double strong double digit moves in the S and P, and they they must close near the lows of the day. That's where we're getting a serious sell signal. So right now, those okay. are things to look for. Hope that helps you. No, it does. Thank thank you very much, Dalzo. You 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 have a great rest of the day. A safe one. Okay. You too. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back, folks, in a moment. Dow's down two hundred seventy. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Just before we get to our uh, last segment here, I just want to show you uh, this sideways move. Another side We've just seen this over and over. Sideways move lower, sideways move lower, sideways now. Theoretically, when you're at lows, the sideways move should see a pop above the rectangle high and then a test. And if it breaks down again, it says, whoops, you're going to stick around here with lower lows and lower highs. And here we are. No, There's no rally to speak of. Down 16 in the S&P. Still not a really bad action. <clears throat> At minus 22, I'd say, ho, oh, oh, ho, now you've got to be careful. So this allows for some kind of a pop back into that upper rectangle towards that 4 4 Five three in the S and P E many four four six zero oh, four four six two. That's something to watch. And later in the day, <clears throat> uh, I'd say to subscribers, this is what I do for my subscribers every day. Uh, <clears throat> let me show you. That was there. Uh, was that yesterday? No, that was not yesterday. What I do every day is right here. Uh, there it is. So that was a previous day. Uh, today I said. Uh, Dow close up 281 at 34871 with an inside day. There's an inside day. And then it, uh, I give a whole analysis, analysis, and then I say 
if after 1.30 p.m. the Dow is minus 50s or more, this is with the futures hugely up this morning, um, or more, the chances of a weak close increases, especially if the Qs drag it down. And that I'm, I'm staying with that. That's the theme, and that's the analysis I give every day, besides my, my traders' corner and whatever charts I think is important to show. So don't forget, you've got programming here. You've got uh, Think or Swim coming up after me. Uh, you know, this is um, Kevin Hinks uh, and, and the crew. Fabulous program on options. Um, we've got, then you've got Larry Pesavento. Larry will be back today. I guess, I, I believe he's got a guest. Uh, that should be fabulous. Then you've got Steve Roach, you've got Dave White, you've got Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with Tom a little later on this afternoon. Have a great day. I'll see you back tomorrow. Check out my opening call my day. Who's there? Dow's down 254. As if you say, now me. I'll be back. Building wealth.